You're watching Bubble Sword at Work, sorting a bunch of letters into alphabetical order. Now let's take that same list and use insertion sort. Now let's take that same list and use quick sort. Whoa! Hope you didn't blink! Let's try that again. Ready, set, go! In this video, we're going to look at all the steps that Quicksort takes to do what it does so fast. And we will be discussing the variant of Quicksort where the array gets partitioned into three sections. Quicksort has three steps. The first step is to partition the array, which we're about to walk through. The other two steps, well, they're a bit wild. We'll get to them when we get to them. So let's talk about partitioning. There are a few moving parts, so let's just talk about those first. There are two pointers, LT and GT. And as we go through the partitioning process, LT is going to meander toward the right, and GT is going to meander toward the left. We also have this yellow square. This indicates our cursor. The cursor points to the current number that we're considering. And that cursor is all also going to meander to the right. And at some point, that cursor and GT are going to cross over. And when that happens, we know we're done. The process of partitioning is going to divide this array up into three groups. The middle group will contain the pivot. So we're using the very first number as our pivot and we have that in white. And in fact, if you look across, there's another five. So the middle group is gonna end up containing these two numbers. The left group will contain all the numbers less than five. And the right group will contain all the numbers greater than five. So let's talk about how we actually do the partitioning. We do that by following these rules. We always take a look at the number at the cursor and we compare it with the pivot. And there are three possibilities. Either the number at the cursor is less than the pivot, or it's greater than the pivot, or it's equal to the pivot. And depending on which of those cases we're in, these rules tell us what we need to do. So let's get started. Right now, the cursor is at the pivot. That means the cursor equals the pivot. So the only thing we need to do is to move the cursor to the right. So now the cursor is at 2. 2 is less than the pivot. So that means we're in rule number 1. The first thing we're going to do is swap the number at the cursor with the number at LT. So this 5 and this 2 are going to swap. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to move LT to the right by 1. And then finally we're going to move the cursor to the right by 1. So let's do those three things. So now the cursor is at 1 and we compare one with the pivot. And again, we have that our cursor number is less than the pivot. So we do those same three steps. We swap one and what's at LT, which is five. We move LT to the right and we move the cursor to the right. Now the cursor is at eight and that brings us into rule two because the cursor now eight is bigger than the pivot. So in this case, we're going to swap the cursor not with LT, but with GT. And then we're going to move GT to the left. You'll notice the cursor didn't change, but that's because the number at the cursor changed. So here we have a number that's 6, which again is bigger than the pivot. And so again, that brings us into rule number 2. So we swap what's at the cursor with what's at GT and we move GT to the left again. Now the number at the cursor is less than the pivot, and that brings us to rule number one. So we swap the number at the cursor with the number at LT, move LT to the right, move the cursor to the right. So let's pause here and take a look at what we see that's starting to happen. The numbers to the left of LT are less than the pivot. The numbers to the right of GT are greater than the pivot. And the pivot has started its move toward the center to where it's going to belong so that there's enough room for the stuff less than the pivot to be to its left 
and there's enough room for the stuff greater than the pivot to be on its right. But let's keep on going. So the cursor is now at nine. Nine is greater than the pivot. That means we're in rule two. We swap the cursor with GT, move GT to the left. Now the number at the cursor is zero, which is smaller than the pivot. We're at rule number one, so we swap the cursor in LT, move LT to the right, move the cursor to the right. And look at that, just like that, our two pivots are now together and they're going to stay together. So the cursor is now at a pivot. I mean, this is really the original pivot, but this is equal to the pivot. That brings us to rule number three. And rule number three says all you do is you just move the cursor to the right. Now we're at a number that's smaller than the pivot, so we swap cursor and LT, move LT to the right, move the cursor to the right. Now we're greater than the pivot, so swap the cursor in GT, move GT to the left. We're still greater than the pivot, so swap the cursor in GT, move GT to the left. Now we're smaller than the pivot, so swap the cursor in LT, LT to the right, cursor to the right. And we're just gonna keep on going. And now we see that the cursor and the GT are starting to cross over. We're not quite done yet. We still have a little bit left to do. This one is on the wrong side. We're at the first rule, so we're gonna take care of that. And now we've crossed over. Since we're done, we know that these fives are complete. They are in their final resting spot. And if you double check, everything to the left of the fives is smaller. Everything to the right of the fives is greater. These are not yet sorted. So what is our next step? We've done our partitioning. I mentioned that we have two steps left. Well, the first step is we need to sort these elements to the left of five amongst each other. And then we, the third step is to sort these elements to the right of five amongst each other. How are we gonna sort them? Well, we're just going to recursively call quick sort. This might sound strange, but if we keep recursing, we keep partitioning and recursing and partitioning and recursing, we're going to end up with a fully sorted array. So for step two, we need to run quick sort now on just this portion of the array. And you may have noticed that in the lower left corner of the screen, we've got this weird little uh, thing of yellow squares. This is kind of a visualization of our stack. Our stack reminds us of what we have left to do. And what we were just doing is running the partition against the entire array. But now we've found that these two elements are done and we are done with them forever. And now we're on the next step, which is to run quick sort on this portion of the array. And so this is reminding us that when we're done with this and we come back down, we still have the right portion to deal with. So think of this as our to-do list so that we don't forget where we were when we interrupted ourselves to do the recursion and to rerun quick sort. So now we're focusing on the left group. So we've grayed out these numbers for now. That doesn't mean that we're done with them. It just means we're not looking at them. And now we are running the partition on this portion of the array. Now our pivot is two, simply because two is the very first number. That's always gonna be our pivot. And we see there's another two, so that's colored in white as well. So we're going to run through these steps again. We start off equal to the pivot, so we move our cursor to right. We're now less than the pivot, and so we swap the cursor in LT, move LT to the right, move the cursor to the right. And we're gonna continue doing these three steps. And magically, the twos kind of bundle together. And we've crossed over our cursor in GT, so we're done with the partitioning portion of this. That means that these twos are done. But we need to continue. Remember, we're running quick sort on this whole section, which means we need to recurse now on this section. We're not done. We can't return until we've done all the three steps. So we're now on the second step of this quick sort, which is to run quick sort on this portion of the array. And so our stack is going to remind us of that by telling us that these twos are all done. And now we're going to run quick sort on that left half of this whole left half of the original array. 
This time our pivot is one. Let's watch it go. And we're done. And so now these two ones are in their final resting spot so they can become green. But to finish this quicksort, we need to run quicksort on its left half. And so our stack reminds us that we're done with these ones, but we still have to do what was to the left of them. So this is gonna be kind of a fast one. We just have a pivot and it's doppelganger. So there isn't gonna be much to do. And that was it, we're done. And so our stack reminds us, okay, we're done with those. Now we can return back down to this portion and we see that we're all done with that portion too. So now we can return back down to this portion and we see that we're not completely done with this array. We finished that left half, but we still need to do that right half. So now we're going to have to run on that right half. And that right half contains these two numbers here. So our pivot is gonna be four and three is just the other number. So we're gonna get them where they need to be. And that's done. So that four gets in to be green. That means we're all done with the four. Now we need to run quicksort on this half, but if there's only one element, there's nothing to do. So it just becomes green, which means we're all done with this. We're all done with this. These are all returning. We finished all those three steps from the quicksort. We're all done with this. Now finally, we popped all the way back to the very first quicksort call, and we need to do that third step, which is recursing on the right side of the array. So that means these light up. Our pivot this time is eight, and we're going to run quicksort here, first with the partition. And those eights are done. And we need to go on the left half. Those sixes are done, so we need to recurse on just that seven, but that's gonna go fast because there's nothing to do. So now we're done with that. We can return from the seven call, we can return from that whole thing. And now we just have this one element left to do. Doing one element is very quick. That means we're done and we can just return. And if you take a look at the array, it's all in green and sure enough, everything has been sorted. Well, that's it. That's the partitioning and the recursion. And those are all the secrets that Quicksort has to offer. Hopefully this helped clarify for you how it all works and that you recognize that even though it's a fairly sophisticated and very fast algorithm, the individual steps really aren't that complicated.